Hey there, fellow wanderers. I hope you're all doing well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you've been here before, I'm sending you a big virtual hug to welcome you back. I'm Becky, the slow traveling wanderer. So in today's video, uh, I'm giving you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to get a COVID test done at Mexican airports, specifically Mexico City, but other airports are doing the same thing to ensure that you have no issues returning to the US as you now are required to provide a negative COVID test before re-entry. This is especially for folks who don't speak Spanish because I know it can be nerve wracking to try to navigate this if you don't speak the language. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I currently find myself in Mexico and I've been here for about two and a half weeks. I'm returning to Austin tomorrow and had to ensure I had a negative COVID test before I went back to the US. Now, I'm going to be honest, I was a bit nervous to travel to Mexico given this new requirement. It wasn't because I was nervous that the test would be positive, although that's always uh, a possibility, um, but I travel very cautiously. Um, what I was nervous about was I, I wasn't completely sure how easy it was going to be to get the test done and whether I could get it done in an efficient manner right within the three-day period um, before flying out as is required by the new rule. I'd done some research online beforehand as you might have seen in my other video um, and while I found a few articles I didn't find anything truly concrete so I was a little nervous. Well, I've been pleasantly surprised and quite impressed. Leave it to Mexico to be super efficient when tourism is at stake, and they definitely delivered this time. So here's how it went for me. I arrived from my other city, which I'll reveal now is Mazatlan, and I'll be uploading a separate video about that trip. Anyway, I arrived from Mazatlan in Terminal 2 of the Mexico City Airport. So after collecting my baggage, I walked out of door four in the arrivals area and there was a signage that you see here that says COVID testing. And it has the arrow pointing up, but kind of out. So it was confusing because I thought it meant it was outside. So I walked out and as I was walking back and forth trying to see if I could locate something, I didn't see anything. So then I asked someone who, they informed me that I had to go back inside, go upstairs, take the escalator upstairs, go to the departures area, and that I would find the testing site between doors five and six. So once I took the escalator upstairs, I walked out of door six, and as I looked left, um, I walked toward uh, door five. I saw what you see here, which is, it's a field clinic type of tent outside. Um, and it's the lab that is used by the CDMX airport or Mexico City airport is LAPI, L-A-P-I. It's pronounced LAPI, LAPI. So just in case you need to ask for it. Also, in case you need to ask for these testing sites, they're called modulos. Think modules, modulos. But you can also say kioscos, like kiosks, right? Um, so you can use modulos or kioscos and people will know what you're talking about. They'll send you in the right direction. Uh, just in case you land in terminal one, which I didn't, so I'm not sure. I'm sure it's set up very similarly, but this is for terminal two specifically. Anyway, I walked in, it was fairly open, um, not very busy. There were only two other patients. The staff were super friendly. They advised me that the cost was 800 pesos, which I could pay either by cash or credit card. I happened to pay by cash because I had um, pesos on me. And they told me the results would be ready in 10 minutes. They perform what's called rapid antigen test and the test results are accepted by US Airlines for re-entry. So I went ahead and said, great, you know, let's get this done. They do take your passport and they keep it throughout the process. One, to verify your identity, but two, because the test results all contain your passport number, your date of birth, and the name must match exactly as it is on the passport. So they kind of make sure that everything ties in. And it was fairly quiet. Um, I arrived on a Thursday at 5.20 p.m. Uh, I was called in by the technician within five minutes. She performed the swab and oh, that was the most uncomfortable thing. I'd never gotten a COVID test. I actually had um, uh, an antibody test, but that was a blood, a blood drawn. And cause I thought I'd been exposed at some point and it turned out negative, but I had not had the swab done and oh my God, is it uncomfortable? But anyway, it's quick and it, it's, it's fast. So it's over with pretty quickly. 
Uh, she asked me to wait in the, the chairs that you see here, which is kind of a little waiting area. And she said the results would be ready in 10 minutes. So I sat down, literally did, didn't even have enough time to read a, you know, an article on my phone because it, the results were ready within like three or four minutes. It was very quick. Um, now it did make me wonder how accurate are these results <laughs> because they were all almost instantaneous, but you know, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. The lab is I ISO certified. So for those who don't know what um, ISO or ISO is, it's essentially an international quality uh, agency and designation, right? So that means you meet the highest quality standards and et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, um, I imagine that they're following all the right protocols and well, you know, the, the, everything works the way it's supposed to. My test was negative, which is great. Um, I don't know, I asked myself, what if it was positive? I mean, then what, right? I probably have to go to a hotel, quarantine myself for 14 days and then come back and, either take the test again or at least show that I've quarantined myself after a positive test. Anyway, it, you know, it wasn't the case for me, but just something to consider. They give you this paper-based handwritten result, which you see here, and that can already be used for travel, right? However, they will follow up a few hours later, and in my case, it was by 9 p.m. Uh, or four hours later, I received an email uh, that had an electronic copy, which you see here, which also has an electronic um, copy of the results and that can also be used for travel. I like both just in case I happen to misplace the paper or whatever. And all in all, I was done with everything from start to finish within 15 minutes. It was literally the fastest lab slash medical exam I'd ever experienced. Um, everything went very smoothly. My only advice would be that when they ask for your email, because you want to make sure you get that email result, um, is ask them if you can write your email address. I happen to repeat my email address to this person that was helping me in Spanish at least three times and our wires kept getting crossed because sometimes it's very difficult to translate English email names to Spanish and there it's very easy to mix up letters such as V with B and I and E which in Spanish sound similar so I, I would I would instead say you know can I write it down for you and then once they put it in you can ask them can I can I check just to make sure it's correct and, and they're very cool and very open but this way you make sure that you get the results that um, that you're supposed to get and that's it very painless, very easy, and very effective. So if you're thinking of coming to Mexico, either for business or because you need a mental health break, hey, no judgment on my part, I get it. I would just say travel safely, make sure you protect yourself and protect others. And now you know how to get your COVID test to make sure that you can get back to the US without issue. I also took some pictures of the COVID testing signage at Monterrey's airport and Mazatlan's airport. You can see that the cost differs and it is much lower um, in both of these airports in Monterrey and in Mazatlan compared to Mexico City. But hey, you know, 40 USD isn't terrible. Uh, just be sure to work, within, work it within your budget, right? So that you know what to expect. All right, amigos, I hope you found this information and video helpful. Uh, if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I'll leave it here. Hasta la próxima. See you next time. Bye.